Hello, it's Eric here with another update of the uh, Strange Card project that I've been working on. And uh, I realized it's been actually already six months since the last update, so that's been a really long time, especially given that the video was the last time around very, very well received. And what has actually changed between now and then is that now uh, I have been able to send a couple of these first prototypes out to actually people to use and test them. Uh, so I'm waiting for that feedback and I also want to, uh, in this video, explain a little bit how to get started with one of these. You know, how do you install it and uh, how you go around testing it initially and so forth. And I also want to take uh, an opportunity to explain uh, the setup I have here. So uh, I have the TI-99, uh, there's the strange card which is plugged in. Uh, there's a USB connection here going to my Mac and, and there's a terminal program here which enables us to see what actually is being displayed um, there. And uh, then I have an HDMI grabber which is convert connected to the um, uh, TI-99. So the TI-99 in my case is having the F18A board there which provides VGA output and that output is then being converted to HDMI using an external converter and then the result is being captured and this way I should be able to capture both the TI's screen as well as the terminal program at the same time so that we can see what goes on there. One of the reasons why the Strange Card video has been taking so long to create is that uh, I've been working on some other stuff and one of those things is uh, an emulator for the TI-99 uh, for this thing, which is a 32-bit. And now the emulator is launched. This is, of course, still a work in progress, but the code is uh, available in GitHub. And uh, uh, what we can do here is that we can, uh, uh, by pressing left and right, we can push one and two. And uh, that way we can launch uh, applications. So here's TI Invaders running on this device. And uh, yeah, so, uh, that's fully playable. So uh, with this one, I have a portable version of the of the TI-99, of course, without the keyboard. Okay, but uh, let's put this uh, aside aside <laughs> so that we can move on to the strength card stuff. Okay, so I'm um, using the TI's keyboard. I'm now going to basic and. Uh, uh, one of the new features is the SCD one drive so we can uh, use a new command that I have been creating called colder. So this is listing the contents of the uh, drive that is included in the strange card now. And uh, uh, what we, we can see some of the programs that I have been already saving here. But if we quickly create a new basic program, let's say um, 100, you know, print hello world. So there we go, and we can then save it to the SCD1 drive. Hello, like that. And uh, we can see that the strange cards is using the SPI, SPI uh, FFS system to store and access uh, uh, its own memory to, to implement the file system there. And if I now do another colder, we can see that at the end, we have a new program, hello, uh, which is 28 bytes, and, and that's what we loaded. So if we now do a new, what we can do is simply say old SCD1 and hello, and we get our program back. We can run it under the normal TI basic interpreter, or we can use call run, which runs this on the strange card. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, actually showing some debug messages which I have enabled for now, but we have the hello world text there and then we get some statistics uh, including the runtime for that program. So it's a nice ability to be able to have this drive. So what we can do then is that uh, the, if you only have the TI-99 for a console and you have the strange card cartridge, you will be able to do basic programming with that combination and you will be able to save and load your programs. So that's quite fun. I have also started a um, GitHub uh, page uh, or wiki, which is um, documenting some of the features of the strange card so that uh, it's now easier to use. So uh, this is uh, the GitHub page that I have. And uh, if I go here to the wiki, uh, 
what you can see here is the overview of the board, um, some information on what the different buttons do there. Uh, there are instructions. Uh, okay, actually we should start from the getting started page. So this explains uh, how you use this. These pictures are actually from an older version of the strange card firmware and it's not yet documenting, for example, the call der uh, command I just showed there. Uh, there are instructions on how you create an image file. So the image file enables one uh, to, uh, for example, using this example that I have here, you can combine a number of uh, TI-99 cartridge images and make a bin file, which you can then upload the strange card. And uh, that will be then the one that is um, being used. And uh, so you can customize what cartridge images you have there. There are instructions on how you upload that, uh, you know, and you can do this with the serial program using the X modem protocol. There are also instructions on how to update the firmware, which you can also do simply using the USB connection. A very cool game that actually has been in existence for quite a while for the TI. So uh, it's uh, uh, called Aperture. And uh, if I uh, run it here, we can load it from uh, the CD1 drive, like so. We can run it. It is loaded and we can play. And uh, I can also run this same program with the strange card. And as you can see, it sort of starts immediately. And uh, if I push a key, we get this. And uh, I have some kind of bug here. So as you can see, there's uh, the empty uh, cells are not really empty, the characters are, character definitions are somehow bogus. And uh, if I try to move, my guy is just uh, really moving super fast, so it's unplayable on the, with the speed of the strange card, basic. And uh, in order to overcome this, uh, what I have done is that I have a version where I have been inserting a call vsync, so the strange card supports a new basic extension called vsync which will wait for the frame sync of the display and then continue and uh, this actually there are two implementations of this so one for regular basic which was the one i just used so if i do it like that this is coming from the ti basic command line and it's implemented by the 9900 cpu alone but the sim command is also available um, on the side of the strange card and it's then asking the 9900 to look for the next vertical frame sync and uh, then uh, continue the basic program execution. So that means that we can synchronize the basic programs that are running on the strange card with the screen refreshes. Okay, loading again, the um, aperture came. Okay, and since this game was uh, unplayable uh, before, uh, we can insert a call the vertical sync weight like that, and we can save this modified version of the program to the string. Ah, oh, yeah, it has to be in caps. So to the strange card, the name doesn't matter here because it's now uh, just uh, stored to the RAM of the strange card like that. And now, after that modification, by doing a call run, we are running it with that extra uh, basic statement there to wait for the vertical sync. And after that, uh, okay, so we start the game. Yep. And uh, now the game is much more playable. So uh, in the main loop, the vertical, I mean, the main loop, in the main loop, the vertical sync enables us to. Uh, Let's see, uh, we can shoot one portal there and make another one there and we can go there and uh, yeah. 
and we can go like that. And we are here in the second room. The one weakness uh, that we have here is that um, uh, I haven't modified the part of the code which actually um, is running uh, when the guy is falling. So as you can see, the falling is pretty much instantaneous. And uh, in, on some levels, uh, for example, on this level, you need to shoot a portal mid-flight. But uh, that's hard to do when the guy is dropping so fast. So uh, uh, when importing games for the strange card, uh, it's important to have those call these uh, statements in the right places so that uh, the game is playable. So um, I also want to show you how to build your own flash image if you want to have a different selection of cartridge images which are loaded. So uh, uh, if I just quickly open up here my... Uh, uh, so it's build flash I believe is the... Yeah, build flash image, that's the shell script I use. So this is running under Mac OS. Uh, it also works under Linux and uh, so forth. So uh, uh, we had quite a few uh, images there. So if I comment out a few from here, so if I, uh, uh, let's go like that. And uh, uh, perhaps that's, maybe I remove that one too. So before I run this script and upload the new one, if I now say uh, call, cards to list the cartridge images. We have so many of them that they don't really fit well into the screen. And uh, I wonder why I have these extra uh, line fields. Let me actually reset the strange card and the TI. Okay, the TI is now reset. And um, from, yeah, if I do a listing of the cartridges we have loaded here, uh, we have so many of them that they don't quite fit on the screen. So now with these edits that I made to my script, and the script is also there as part of documents, I can now exit, save, yeah, that's saved. Then I run the script, the build, and I, I do hope that the, the text is still visible and readable on the video. So let's run it, and it's done. So uh, what we got as a result of this is that we have this um, uh, flash image .bin file. So if I do just look at the size of the file, so we have the flash image right here, and the size is um, uh, approximately half a megabyte for for this image. Okay, uh, I will then open up a Finder window and bring it in here, and uh, we can see here. Uh, this is just a finder window here. We have the flash image, which I just created. Uh, and uh, now what we can do here is that we can uh, look into the help to see what command to use on this side to download a new image. And it happens to be here in the pretty much on the top. So we have the xdl command to download uh, a new image through the serial flash chip on the cartridge. So what I can do is to just enter the command xdl and it now is waiting for an X modern transmit. And the way I have been setting this up is that I can just drag and drop uh, my flash image to the terminal emulator window and it will send the half a megabyte uh, image like that. And it's now then done. So we are now good and now what we should be able to do is to um, on the TI side, do another listing of the cartridges which are loaded here. And what we can see is that we have uh, far fewer uh, images. And I also see that we have some kind of a problem with image number 11, so something to work on. But uh, the listing definitely did change. So let's find out what actually happened with the image, I believe that um, the problem probably is that the, the image should be banded.
Okay, I think that in order actually to, because this new image is smaller than the image I used to have, I think I have a problem here. So uh, uh, probably what we need to do actually is to say flash erase and we erase, uh, let's say from zero to, uh, so let's say to four megabytes. So that would be in hexadecimal. So this is, uh, okay, I think we need one more. So how is this working? So that's uh, four, 64K, one megabyte four, yeah. I think that that should do it. So we erase four megabytes of flash from the address zero. And uh, let's see if this is working. If this works, what should happen is that we have nothing actually in the uh, external flash chip in terms of cartridge images. Uh, it takes a while. Okay, so the erase is done and I guess now if I do a call cards here we should get a very short list. Yes, it only is listing the images which are loaded into the memory of the microcontroller itself. So it also includes some of these cartridge big images. And then we can do another XDL here to for X modem download. And then we can drop in the flash image. Okay, and that was done. And let's see what we get. So we do the call cards. Yeah, and there you go. So we have the listing properly. So I still have seem to have an issue when the new uh, image file is shorter than, than the previous one. Anyway, I hope that you found this video interesting and hopefully you get a, a little bit more idea on how the strange card actually is working.